we're lucky enough to have John Hughes, the Browns' third round draft choice out of Cincinnati coming down here. And my seat is up higher. He is taller than me. Don't worry. <laughs> first and foremost, Bob, welcome to Cleveland and welcome to the studios. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right. First and foremost, OTA start tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, for fans, and, I, and you and I have talked on radio, we've talked different times. You're moving, you're, you're moving from an hour and a half away. Um, what is going to be the difference for you in leaving kind of your hometown? And people don't know this. The first football team you played for was the Cleveland Browns, correct? Yeah. So this is, supposed, this is a team you're supposed to play for, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what is the biggest difference you feel like you're going to have to go through now that you're here? Uh, I kind of feel like the same things when I was in Cincinnati. Uh, you know, being about two hours away, coming up north and out of Cleveland, yeah. being about an hour and a half away. So it's about the same. All right. Now you look at it and I asked you when we were off. The, when we were off. I said, what'd you do today? And you laughed and you said, I worked. <laughs> what did work mean? You had to be in a, you had to be in a facility, what, 7 o'clock this 7 morning? 7 o'clock, yeah. Now, what does that consume And right now in the off season? What all do you have to go through? Oh, uh, Right now, we're just doing weightlifting, uh, meetings, uh, some running, and then going over the plays. All right. Now, when you go over plays now, you can't go out in the field at this point in time. Mm -hmm. But is it more just classroom work that you have to go through over and over and over again? Yeah, you know, just to get, uh, get the plays down. All right, now obviously playing defensive line, uh, and we saw some of the highlights earlier, and I said you were the biggest 40 I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> when you went to Cincinnati, were you still trying to tell them that you could play tight end? No, nah, see, the reason I got 40, uh, in high school I was 37, I played tight end. Okay. And um, I told them I wanted 40 when I got to UC, so I got to UC and they gave me the closest number they could get to, 37, which is 40. Right. And I just kept it, trying to make a name for it. Talk about going to UC, and you and I have talked about this, but... Obviously, you grew up right next to Ohio State. And mm -hmm. I think any kid, for all of us, I grew up in Northeast Ohio. I played football. Um, I ended up at Kent State, so I didn't end up at Ohio State either. I went to Kent State. Uh, did you? Yeah. Hey, I would have helped to get you there if you needed it. <laughs> but you end up in Cincinnati. And nothing wrong in Cincinnati, because Cincinnati is becoming an up-and-coming program. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say you were a big part of that. Um, what that. did it mean to you to go to Cincinnati, not go to Ohio State? Uh, and I know you were under that. You were under a couple different regimes. But Cincinnati was a household name by the time you left and were drafted. What did it mean to you to go there and become an up-and-coming program? Uh, just to see the Cincinnati program uh, do the, the strides it had it was amazing. You know, um, those five years I was there, and uh, being from Columbus, you know, I always got the my friends and my family talking about Ohio State and everything. But you know, I'm, I, I bleed red and black now. So right. Well, Zach, your quarterback Corrales, he's he's from that tip of Ohio on West Virginia. Steubenville. Steubenville. Yeah. All right. Well, when I went to Kent State, I roomed with a guy named Jose Davis, mm -hmm. and he was from he was from Bel Air. Okay. And the same area. And I mean, and he goes, well, you got to see what football is like down there. He took me over one Friday down to that area, uh -huh. and there's not a lot to do, <laughs> but they take football serious. And when I heard that Zach was going going to Cincinnati, mm -hmm. I remember going, he's undersized, but he'll win football games. And I think that was the one thing he was able to do for you guys, correct? Yeah. All right, now, what's your, when somebody asks about John Hughes, and they ask me, what's the best thing that he does as a football player, what would you want that answer to be? Uh, I think I, with my game, you know, I took it to another level. I'm a more versatile player. Um, I can play the run very well, then uh, when it comes to the pass, I can play pass good. Um, double teams, how fun, or what is, take an average guy, that's sitting out here watching you right now. Explain to them what it's like to have two 300-pound guys <laughs> come down and block you at the same time. Imagine uh, somebody dropping a car on you, and you got you got to push the car away from you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean honestly, and I, every time somebody says, and, and defensive linemen are, and offensive linemen are the hardest guys for normal people to judge because we don't understand what's going on in there. And if you get a double team and you keep those guys and hold those guys off, mm -hmm. you've just done your job. Right. And a lot of times people don't understand uh -huh. if you can com if command that double team play after play after play, you're going to become a great player mm -hmm. in the mind of your teammates. Now, as you come up another level, obviously strength is important. Yeah. But how much does leverage? Did you wrestle or did you do anything in high school or anything? Because I know a lot of defensive linemen wrestled. Anything that you did with your body to prepare to be able to do this? Um, I think my footwork came from playing basketball. I played basketball my whole life. Okay. Uh, all the way up until my senior year of high school. So. Okay. So footwork is one of those things. Um, have you been able to be around Ruben? Because I told you about what Ruben's like, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> all right. What's he been like in a weight room and dealing with him? Uh, actually, they uh, had the rookies working out different times than the vets, okay. but um, we talked to him in the meeting rooms, off the field sometimes, so he's a good guy, really good right. guy. Going through uh, rookie camp mm -hmm. and seeing you in rookie camp, obviously you have a lot of other rookies. You guys are all kind of going through it for the first time. Um, and obviously you have Billy here, that, and you guys are kind of in the same position, so you got somebody that kind of is going to go through it with you at the same time. But what was the biggest difference in going through like a, a, a pro camp compared to what you did in college? Uh, one of those going to be a difference coming uh, from college, but uh, I think the biggest thing was the, uh, the tempo, the pace. You know, um, it's a business now, so everything's moving. 
Um, OTA start tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be out there. The media will be out there for the first day. Uh, and you're going to be with your teammates now. You're going to be with the guys that mm -hmm. you're going to call teammates. Um, and it, you know what? And I think all of us go through this, but we don't think about it for, for pro athletes. You went from big man on campus, and now you're, now you're going to be a rookie, and you're probably be carrying guys' pads and all that. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. I'm just telling you, John. It's what happens. And, but it's got to be hard because you go from high school, and we all go from being the freshman, sophomore, this doing the work. Exact same thing. Same thing. You just that's the mindset you're going to take into mm -hmm. it. That you're, and, and now, obviously, there's been an injury to Phil Taylor. No one wants injuries, but it's kind of how football works. Next man up. Mm -hmm. You're going to get an opportunity, maybe not to start, or maybe to start um, does that change your motivation at all knowing that now there's a there's a push to probably have you on the field early in September uh, it doesn't really change the way I look at the game you know, I still go out there put my shoes on the same way and, and play as hard as I can so who was a defensive lineman you watched growing up that you wanted to be like uh, I watched I mean I've watched a lot of different guys um, Actually, uh, Will Smith, I liked his, uh, his uh, aggression on the field when he played for All-State. I would think you were more of a Warren Sapp guy. Warren I Sapp? I watched Warren Sapp, too. He's a beast. Now, let me ask you this. For a guy, and because we always go through technique, and everybody everybody goes, well, I'm a one technique or I'm a three technique. Mm -hmm. For you, you, obviously, right, you like watching a guy on the outside like Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Now, when you watch film on a guy, you know, how do you go through watching film on each guy and see what you can take away from him? Uh, you break down because um, guys give you little things that they do, you know, uh, the way their splits are, the way different stuff is in their stands. I mean, there's a lot of things you can look in the film. That's why you're always in the film room watching film. Now, when, uh, for you, when you're looking at defensive guys, now do you look at the offensive lineman? Because you just said a split will tell you sometimes whether it's a draw, screen, Run, pass, pass, play. Yeah. And now, and see, I always, and now I'm, I'm always curious about this because we had Andre Davis here. He was a linebacker, mm -hmm. and he's with Buffalo now. And he would go, Dre. I know a play as soon as they line up. And I would like look at him and be like, you gotta be out of your mind. Be surprised, and, and, yeah. and, and, and say, yeah, so you're saying <laughs> you'd be surprised. Now, in your mind, and you may have a play call, and let's say you see an offensive lineman, let's say you know there's no pressure on his knuckles. Mm -hmm. That probably means he's gonna pass because yep. he doesn't have all his weight going forward. Right. In your mind, is it easy to just say, it's a pass, I'm teeing off. Mm -hmm. you, know what I, you know what I mean? Or it, do you worry about what you gotta do? Uh, you still worry about your assignment, but at the same time, you know, you uh, look at it like, oh, it's pass, I'm going to get off the ball more. If it's run, I'm going to be able to sit down a little bit more. Um, for fans that probably didn't get to know you, obviously, you get drafted in the third round. And I remember this comment, and I'm bringing it up because I find it hilarious because you're honest. Right. And I've been talking all day long about Chris Perez, and don't get into that. Just say you love fans and you love that they show up. <laughs> so first thing I'm going to tell you, Browns fans are awesome. But obviously, because you're a defensive player, um, a lot of people probably, uh, defensive linemen, excuse me, and mm -hmm. the Browns were heavy in offense this year in, mm -hmm. in their draft because of some of the problems they've had offensively. Right. It was a surprise for some Browns fans that you were selected when you were selected. Uh, and not even fans, because it's, I'll blame it on the media. Here, I'll look in the camera and say, it's the media's fault. We listen to every, don't you say this. That we, we read all these magazines. I'm going to help you. Look at you. I'm going to help you. Because I know how you feel. But we all read these magazines and we make them gospel without really knowing who a person is, who a player is. And most of these people that write these articles about you, I'll say it. They didn't watch one Cincinnati football game all year long. They read what some guy here or there wrote. They can't break down. Now, nah, I can. And I did watch Cincinnati games. <laughs> oh, man. But I guess what I'm saying is you go through that situation. It's the best day of your life. And you hear people, and suddenly people are, re are writing, it was a reach to take John Hughes with the third pick, you know, the third round pick. Mm -hmm. You're a guy that grew up an hour and a half, two hours from here. The first team you played for was the Browns. I'm not putting words in your mouth, but a little frustrated, a little hurt, hurt your feelings a little bit that you see those things, or is that just motivation to make you better? Oh, yeah, it's motivation. Um, you know, you try to look at that stuff and keep moving. All right, and, when, and you know and you know how this business works. It's you know, mm -hmm. when 50% of this is how the rule I was taught. 50% of people are going to love you. 50% of people are going to hate you. Um, but probably unfair because I did my research, and the first thing I found out was how much the Browns were in love with you before the draft, how they had you here in pre-draft, mm -hmm. uh, how they, they wanted to know everything about you. And to me, I've kind of found out when they want to know everything about you, they don't care uh, where they drafted you. The Browns were high on getting you here for whatever you did when they met you. So don't get caught up in all that stuff that's written and said, because I'm going to tell you, and I'm saying it live on the air, when you make plays and you get those double teams and Dequell Jackson is running around making 200 tackles a year, nobody's going to care about that draft day and what people were writing and saying. And, and I mean, I'm being honest. And I think a lot of people get caught up in that stuff. And I remember when I interviewed you on the radio. And we got off the radio, and I had eight tweets and emails. And every guy from Cincinnati goes, 
John, he goes, that was a great interview with John. He goes, but you're going to love John when you see him play. Do you feel like you're in that position of, I just want to get on the field with an orange helmet on and show people what type of player I am? Yeah, exactly. That's what I've been waiting on, you know, just to get on the field and be able to produce. Um, growing up, did grow, you know, what would you, would, what would you have been if you didn't get drafted to be a football player? What would you have wanted to do? Uh, growing up, I would have been a basketball player, you know, right. just like a lot of sports growing up. Right. But uh, after I graduated from uh, Cincinnati in criminal justice, I wanted to be able to do uh, counseling for addictions. Now, what made you want to get involved in something like that? Uh, just, uh, I've seen people uh, throughout my life with addiction problems. To be able to help somebody means a lot to me. Uh, how will it, now the other thing the Browns are good at is getting guys out in the community and helping out. Mm -hmm. um, and being in Ohio, you're going to be able to be able to go help probably some areas that you grew up around. Does that mean something to you? Is how important is that for you? Oh yeah, definitely. Just to give back to the community, uh, you know, stuff so, so that I didn't have growing up, I can give to somebody else. Means the world to me. Absolutely. All right, John. Um, all right, I'm gonna quickly go through. I've asked you some of these, but people on TV haven't seen, haven't heard this. Your uh -huh. favorite meal? Favorite meal? My mom's spaghetti pie. I'm telling you, you gotta have some. It's, it's, the, it's the best thing out there. <laughs> all right, I'm all for it. I'll try it out. Um, a stadium or a team that you look forward to playing in 2012? A guy that you like looked up? Is, you know, is there a game that you're looking forward to or just being on the field with somebody? I can't wait to play Pittsburgh, to tell you the truth. You know, that's, that's the only thing I've heard from fans here in Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pittsburgh yeah. so that's going to be a good game. All right, no, I'm, I'm telling you this, and you, and you can say something to Joe Hayden about this. Um, Joe Hayden, I, and I got a good relationship with Joe, and I asked him the same thing his rookie year, and he goes, man, I can't wait to go against T.O. and Ocho Cinco, <laughs> right? So we play, against, we play against him, he comes off the field, and I go, what was it like? And he looks at me, he goes, Man, Ocho didn't even say nothing. He goes, he was waiting for him to talk mess to him the whole time. He said, he goes, Chad wasn't even talking to me. It was like weird. Um, and I always, I always just like seeing you guys go through that because I feel like what fans don't realize is you guys are fans too. There are certain players that you want to go against that you want to see play. Mm -hmm. And Joe has always been that guy where Joe goes, I couldn't wait to go against T.O. T.O. almost baptized him on one play. And he said, <laughs> and then he realized, he goes, all right, I'm just going to play and stop being a fan <laughs> and stop worrying about it. Um, first car you had? First car, uh, Mercury Mountaineer. First car that you're looking forward to having. See, you're still young. So that, that's, that's, Mountaineer is not that bad. My neighbor's got one of those. <laughs> I thought about Escalade, but I kind of want to get an Expedition. All right, all right. That'll be good for you. Um, mm -hmm. Favorite cartoon growing up? Favorite cartoon? Uh, I have so many, man. It's probably Rocco's More Than Life or uh, Doug. All right. See, I'm just, I want people to know who you are. And what's the song that you like to listen to before you go on the field? Before going on the field? <sighs> Let's see. Probably um, Biggie, Juicy. Oh, I like you. Yeah. You know very well who you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can wrap it for you. All right, another thing is save your money. Uh, the veterans are going to make you try to pay for dinners and things like that. Mm -hmm. Be careful with that. Um, and looking forward, how good is it for your family to be able to, to have your family still this close and be able to see you and be around you? Oh, it's great, especially for my grandmother. You know, um, she'll be able to come up here and see me play. It's not too a forward drive for her, so. All right, I'm going to let you go. You did well. Hopefully fans will get a better uh, perception of who you are. I think you're going to be great with the Browns. The Browns are building the defense. It's one of the better defenses they've had since 99. Mm -hmm. No pressure on you, though. And you got good, And I don't, I don't know how long you've been around Dick Duran, but I can tell you, being around the defensive players, they loved uh, playing for Coach Ryan the previous year. Mm -hmm. But Coach Duran, is not, he's not really a yeller and a screamer. But he's a mm -hmm. guy that's going to get you in your place. Mm -hmm. He's very intelligent. Yeah. And he, he lets you do what you do best, is right. what every player has told me. And I think that'll be good for your career going forward, that mm -hmm. you have a coach like that. Uh, and it's good to have a couple extra head coaches around as you go forward. Yeah. So enjoy it, all right? I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. John Hughes, he's a Browns third round selection. OTA startup uh, tomorrow. Then next week, get ready for it, man. And it's hot. This is just how coaches want it. You might lose a little <laughs> weight going through that. We'll come back. We'll continue taking your phone calls. Thank you for John for stopping by. We'll continue the show, though, here shortly. You are watching All Bets Are Off here in the Hyundai studios of STO.